How can starting a rumor make your son king? Why was England part of Denmark? And was Alfred great? Was Edgar peaceful? And was Ethelred unready? The Kings and Queens of England. The Saxons get the savagery started. After the Romans retreated from Britain in the 5th century, tribal chieftains throughout the island spent the next few hundred years fighting over territory. Some grew stronger and some consolidated power, while others fell to the wayside. In the end, one dynasty, the House of Wessex, emerged to establish a monarchy that, while its path has not been smooth or straight, has been an unbroken line from the 9th century all the way to the modern queen and her descendants. The House of Wessex Alfred the Great Alfred was the fourth son of the king of the small kingdom of Wessex. As a child, he accompanied his father on pilgrimage to Rome. His family were continuously fighting the Viking invasions, and Alfred proved himself a capable military leader in the kingdom's defense. One by one, Alfred's brothers fell victim to the savage life of a warrior, and Alfred was crowned King of Wessex in 871 at the age of 22. He defeated the Vikings in two significant battles, and the Danish king Guthrum was forced to make peace with him. Their treaty divided England between the kings, the northeast to Guthrum and the southwest to Alfred, adding significant territory to his rule. Alfred married Aelswith, a Mercian noblewoman, and further strengthened his power. Alfred's name means wise elf, and he certainly was. He built up the country's defenses with fortified communities, reorganized the army, and established a navy to ward off future Viking attack. He promoted education, improved the justice system, and reformed coinage. He also reestablished the Roman city of London, which had been ravaged after years of Viking attack, but had a crucial location on the River Thames. When Alfred died at 50 after 28 eight years on the throne, he was known as the King of the Anglo-Saxons, or King of the English. Edward the Elder Alfred's eldest son was the next on the throne. He ruled for 25 years and continued to expand the English kingdom. He captured East Anglia from the Danes and ensured nearly a century of respite from Viking attack. He became ruler of Mercia in 918 upon the death of his sister, who had inherited the lands from their mother. At this time, inherited lands were often divided between children rather than oldest takes all. Edward died at 50. Ethelstan. Upon Edward's death, his son, Ethelstan, was named King of Mercia. His brother, Elfweird, may have been named King of Wessex, but Elfweird only outlived their father by 16 days, so Ethelstan took control of both territories. He conquered the last remaining Viking stronghold, York, making him the first Anglo-Saxon king to rule the whole of England. He invaded Scotland and forced the kings of Scotland and Wales to submit to him. He centralized government and continued the legal reforms of his grandfather Alfred. He established England as a power in Europe, arranging political marriages for many of his sisters to foreign kings. Ethelstan was incredibly pious. He collected relics, founded churches, and never married. He ruled for 15 years and died at 44. Edmund I Ethelstan's younger brother Edmund became king at the age of 18. During his seven-year reign, he lost the Midlands to invasion and then reconquered them, established peace relations with the kings of Scotland and Dublin, and helped to restore Louis IV as king of France. Edmund's first wife, Elgiva of Shaftesbury, bore him two sons, both of whom would later be kings. She was renowned for her charity and was made a saint after her death. At 25, Edmund was assassinated while attending Mass. The culprit, an exiled thief, was himself murdered on the spot. Edred. As Edmund's sons were still children, Edmund's brother, Edred, took the throne. Edred had to deal with continued uprisings in Northumbria. He ruled for nine years before succumbing to a digestive illness at the age of 32. He died a bachelor. Edwig. After his uncle's death, Edmund I's eldest son, Edwig, sat the throne. He was 15. His reign was tarnished by womanizing and rivalries with nobles. When Edwig failed to show up for a council meeting, a bishop went to look for him. He found him in bed with two women, 
a mother and daughter. The bishop dragged Edwig to the council. The court and church grew tired of their king's immoral ways and rallied around Edwig's younger brother, Edgar. They annulled the king's marriage against his will on the grounds of consanguinity, or that he and his wife were too closely related. But really, they didn't want any children stepping in Edgar's way. Edwig died at the age of 19. The reason is lost to history, but the council certainly wasn't shedding any tears. Edgar the Peaceful after his brother's death, Edgar re-established relations with the nobles and clergy his brother had alienated. His coronation was the first of its kind in which nobles throughout Britain pledged their allegiance to him. This formed the basis for the coronation ceremony still celebrated today. His wife, Eltherith, was crowned as queen by his side, the first queen of England to have this honor. He was known as Edgar the Peaceful as his reign marked an end to the division among petty kingdoms. He also gave land to establish Benedictine monasteries throughout the country. Edgar ruled for 15 years and died at 31. Edward the Martyr Upon Edgar's death, nobles chose to rally around his oldest child, Edward, who was 13 even though he was illegitimate. At such a young age, Edward was a weak king. Nobles stole much of the land and wealth his father had gifted the monasteries. Nobles quarreled and civil war nearly broke out. At 16, Edward was murdered. Some believe at the order of the dowager queen, Elftherith, to clear the way for her own son, Ethelred, to take the throne. Ethelred the Unready. At 12, Ethelred was given the crown. The unready is a mistranslation of the Old English word unread, meaning bad counseled. Early in his reign, Viking Danes once again began raiding the English coast, eventually culminating in the Battle of Malden, which Ethelred lost badly. He was forced to pay tribute to the Danish king, Swin Forkbeard. In retaliation, Ethelred ordered a massacre of Danish settlers in England. Swin invaded England and forced Ethelred to flee to Normandy. The House of Denmark Swin Forkbeard was the king of Denmark and most of Norway. He conquered England in 1013 and died the following year at the age of 54. He named his son Canute as his heir, but the nobles of England offered to bring Ethelred the Unready back as king. In exchange for the crown, Ethelred had to sign an agreement, the first of its kind, guaranteeing rights to his people and limiting his power. With the English against him, Canute decided to withdraw, and Ethelred was once again king, at least for two more years until he died. Edmund Ironside Ethelred's son Edmund earned the name Ironsides because of his valor in defending London from the Danes. When his father died, he took the crown at the age of 26. Canute invaded England once more, and this time he was victorious. Edmund was given Wessex to rule, but Canute took the rest of England. Edmund died from a battle wound within months of his defeat. Canute. Canute the Great was king of England, Denmark, and Norway, the North Sea Empire. He took the throne of England at 21. He maintained power over those he conquered by promoting the English who supported him, donating to churches, and ending the taxes that England had been paying to the Danes. Ethelred's widow, Emma of Normandy, didn't want to lose her power and status, so she married Canute. Emma was a powerful queen who promoted her own children over those of Canute's first wife. Canute is often associated with a legend that he was so arrogant, he stood at the beach and tried to command the waves to obey him. However, by most accounts, he was a wise and just ruler. He died suddenly at age 40. Harold Harfoot Harold was Canute's eldest son by his first wife, Elfgifu of Northampton, but it was his younger half-brother, Hartha Canute, who was named Canute's heir. It is not clear why the older brother was passed over, but one legend suggests that he may not have been Canute's son, but rather the son of a cobbler that Elfgifu passed off as Canute's. This rumor may have been started by Hathar Canute's mother, Emma of Normandy. No matter the circumstances, when their father died, Hartha Canute was away on campaign in Denmark, and Harold was appointed regent until the proper king could arrive. Two years into his regency, Harold had enough support among the nobles to have himself declared king. 
two of his stepbrothers, Edward and Alfred, arrived to seize power, but Alfred was captured, blinded, and murdered. Harold didn't get to enjoy his stolen crown for long. He died at 24. Hartha Canute. After his brother Harold's death, Hartha Canute was peacefully offered the crown by the English, but he came with an invading army, just in case. He had his treacherous brother Harold's body exhumed, publicly beheaded, and thrown in the Thames. Hartha Canute was very unpopular as he rejected the king's counsel in favor of autocratic rule. He only trusted one advisor, Godwin, Earl of Wessex, who wielded great power in his court. Hartha Canute doubled the size of the navy and taxed the people heavily to pay for it, causing riots and the murders of tax collectors. A northern earl offended Hartha Canute, and when the earl offered to reconcile, the king promised him safe conduct, but instead had him murdered. From then on, the king was known as an oathbreaker. Hartha Canute was plagued by illness, likely tuberculosis. When, at 24, it was clear that he would die, his mother Emma persuaded him to invite her son, Hartha Canute's half-brother, Edward, to return from exile and take the throne. Edward the Confessor In 1042, following his half-brother's death, Edward, the son of Ethelred the Unready and Emma of Normandy, took the throne and re-established the House of Wessex as the ruling dynasty of England. He was 39 and had spent much of his life in exile in Normandy. He brought several Norman courtiers with him to London, which enraged the English nobility. However, Hartha Canute's advisor, Godwin, was still the real power behind the throne. Edward married Godwin's daughter, Daughter, Edith of Wessex. As his name might suggest, Edward was a very religious man, which could explain why he failed to father children. His 24 years on the throne marked a peaceful time in England, the calm before the storm. In 1066, Harold died at the ripe old age of 62 and was made a saint. However, as he left no heirs, the country would fall into bloody turmoil over who should be the next King of England. Check out the next video to find out how did England have four kings in one year? Why do we call cows beef once they're on the table? And where's the best place to murder your brother and take his crown?